Welcome guys and girls to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to learn about seven common migration strategies for moving applications to the cloud. These are also known as seven R's. The seven R's are relocating, rehosting, replatforming, refactoring or re-architecting, repurchasing, retaining and retiring. As far as migration strategies go, the first four are the important one, the last three, not so much, and you will see why. But before we jump into it, why is the migration strategy important? Because if you let every one of your team just go do the migration themselves without a high level strategy, they all will start using different kinds of services and there will be no best practices to utilize from. Ideally, what you want is after first set of applications go, you create some sort of best practices and then you adopt the similar migration strategy so the other projects can use them. That's why you need a migration strategy. With that being said, let's start with the first one, which is relocating. So relocating, also known as hypervisor level lift and shift. So basically you move the infrastructure to the cloud without purchasing new hardware or rewriting applications or modifying your existing operations. There's only one example of this. For example, if you are running your on-prem software on VMware and it is supported in VMware Cloud on AWS, you can just relocate them. So in this case, you don't need to change anything, literally, you don't even have to understand the bare bone AWS services like EC2, you just move it and run it. The next migration strategy is rehosting. This is probably the most common strategy, especially when a company is starting their journey into AWS. This is known as lift and shift. In this migration strategy, you move an application to AWS without code changes, but you use AWS infrastructure as a service offerings. So this is ideal for quickly migrate to cloud before data center lease runs out. This one is an easy strategy. And when you do that, the workforce learns cloud concepts while migrating and use it to modernize the application down the line. So what are some examples? Could be, let's say your on-premises application is running on virtual machine. So you find out what is a compatible EC2 instance type, and then you migrate your application to EC2. You don't need to change the code per se. For example, if you're running a jar file, all you need to know is a compatible EC2 and you just migrate to it. Another example could be if you are running Oracle on-premises, you can migrate that Oracle to self-managed EC2 servers. So what is the difference between rehosting and relocating? So with the previous strategy, which is relocating, you are not supposed to change anything. With rehosting, you are using AWS's infrastructure services. So when you use EC2, you need to have a way to provision this EC2 and you need to know how to manage it. With the relocating, you don't need to even learn EC2. You just move everything as is. But like I said, the most common migration strategy when a company or organization is starting their AWS journey is rehosting. All right, the next migration strategy is replatforming. This is also known as lift, tinker and shift, also lift and reshape. In this strategy, you move an application to the cloud and introduce some level of optimization to take advantage of cloud capabilities. But you leave the core architecture unchanged. And this strategy reduces the time spent on managing infrastructure. Let's take an example. Let's say you are running Oracle in on-premises. With the previous strategy, rehosting, you are migrating that Oracle to an EC2. But then EC2 means you need to manage your EC2. You need, if there's a security vulnerability in the AMI, you need to patch it, you need to rehydrate it. With replatforming, you migrate that on-premises Oracle to RDS Oracle. With RDS, AWS takes care of the underlying infrastructure. So it gets you out of those management overhead so you can focus your time on somewhere else. Another example could be migrate your application to fully managed platform like Amazon Elastic Beanstalk. And this is more cost effective than rehosting because you are optimizing some components. Now the next migration strategy is refactor or re-architecting. 
So this is the Nirvana, a dream of all customers. So in this migration strategy, you refactor the application using cloud native services. So you move an application and in this migration strategy, you modify its architecture by taking full advantage of cloud native features to improve agility, performance and scalability. So let's say you are running an application on-prem, but let's say it's a monolith and you really want this application to scale faster. And you have plans to implement many, many features in this application and you want them to be released fast to the market. So in that case, you need to refactor or re-architect this application. So example could be breaking down that monolith to microservices using serverless or you containerize your app and start using ECS or Kubernetes. And going back to the database example, from on-premises Oracle to Amazon Aurora. This has more benefits than rehost and replatform, but of course this takes time because breaking down a monolith to microservices or even migrating a microservices running on VM to microservices running on serverless requires refactoring the code. So it obviously takes more time. Now the next uh, three options are not really cloud migration, but I'm gonna go through it. So repurchasing means moving from a traditional license to a software as a service model. Uh, so for example, you have some CRM software that you manage today. CRM as in customer relationship management, where you log all the customer activities, uh, projected revenue, etc. So you are like, you know what, I don't wanna manage it or pay for this software's license and manage it. I'm just gonna migrate this to Salesforce. Another example could be uh, migrating a human resources system to Workday. The next migration strategy is retaining. So in this case, you do nothing for now. So you keep your applications in source environment. So this might include applications that requires major refactoring and you want to postpone that work until at a later time and a legacy application that you want to retain because there is no business justification for migrating them. Uh, another example could be you have an application running on-prem which will be replaced by a newer applications that's being developed. It doesn't make sense to migrate them to cloud. All right and the last migration strategy is retire and as the name says you basically remove application or retire applications no longer needed. And what it does is it allows more attention to appropriate applications. So sometimes folks thinks that if some applications is not being used, we'll just keep them as is. That's not good, right? Because that means you do need to spend time on if something goes down, uh, maintaining, etc. So you should always retire applications that are no longer needed. But again, like I said, last three migration strategies are not really relevant for cloud migration. So going through the level up effort, least level up effort is retire, probably figured that one out, then retain, relocate, because remember relocate, you don't need to change anything. And then rehost, and then repurchase, because as you migrate from one licensing uh, model to like a software as a service, you do need to learn that new SaaS product. For example, migrating from a self-managed CRM software to Salesforce, you need to understand Salesforce, you need to migrate those data, etc. And then a replatform and the highest amount of effort, like we already discussed before, is refactor. All right, so now that we went through the seven different migration strategies, uh, let's find out how do you choose one. If you'd like to know more about migrating any application to AWS, as well as learning core concepts of AWS or DevOps, system design, Kubernetes, Git, GitHub, serverless, check out my highest rated and best selling courses. Currently, all my Udemy courses are on maximum discount. Simply go to cloudwithraj.com and then click this discounted Udemy link and it will automatically apply the discount. This is a great way to support me and this channel. All right, folks, thanks for your interest. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.